Okay, guys, this just showed up, and I have to say that I am absolutely stoked to be able to take a look at this. Uh, this is an Uvis light. I don't know, Alvis light. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. That part is irrelevant. Uh, what I can say, if we flip it over on this side, there we go, like that. This is a mini PC. And then let's take it one more rotation here. Uh, this, like it says, mini PC. This is the CK10 model in gray with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of hard drive space with the uh, US spec there. Uh, and that's that's it, man. There's, there's really nothing else on any of these other sides. So let's take the lid off. Off, 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 there it goes. And there it is. So let's turn this. This is an Intel Core i5 inside. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna set this aside. Uh, we're gonna look at this later. Of course, what we really want to see, uh, well, what we really want to see is is this, right? But of course, there are those pesky uh, peripherals and 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 accessories that, of course, we want to know what we're getting here. Oh man, that just that just fell right apart. Okay, is that it? Nope. A little bit more. A little bit more. Some more. There's more. All right. Cool. So mounting plate, uh, this will this will go. You can mount this on the back of your, this is 100 millimeter. You can mount that on the back of your monitor if you wanted to do that. And then of course, a couple of mounting screws to go on the back or the bottom or whatever of the PC. Uh, we've got mounting screws and uh, standoffs for uh, the M.2 uh, drives uh, that we might be able to put in there. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Power cable, of course, we'll need that. Uh, this of course is a SATA drive or a SATA connector uh, with power and uh, data on the other end. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. Uh, we've got a full-size HDMI cable there. Awesome, glad to see that. And then we have, oh, there's, <laughs> then we have our power cable, power brick. Uh, this is, uh, what is it? Uh, 19 volts at 3.42 amps for about 65 uh, watts of, of power there, I guess, if I were to bring that up. About 65 watts of power uh, for this whole thing. So now that we've looked at the accessories and gotten that nonsense out of the way, uh, let's actually take a look at our little mini PC, the CK10 here. So I think, let's see, oh, all right, let's undo, let's undo this, like so, come on. Oh, there it goes, all right. Okay, so. Uh, this little mini PC comes with an 8th gen Intel Core i5, like it says right there. Of course, it doesn't say 8th gen, but that's what it is. Uh, on the top, it has uh, a fan up here uh, that you can't see, but I promise you will hear it under any workload. It also has uh, a fingerprint reader right there. Uh, if we take a look at the front, uh, there we go. We've got our power button, a couple of USB 3s, a couple of USB 2s, uh, a trans flash or micro SD card, speaker, microphone, and reset. I'm honestly not sure what the reset is for, but it's there uh, if you want it. Of course, on either side, uh, just some ventilation holes, uh, nothing nothing real special going on there. Of course, we flip it over to the back. Uh, we got a one gig LAN, two more USB 3s, a BGA port, an HDMI port, a type C uh, display port, uh, and a 19 volt uh, uh, barrel jack adapter. We flip it over to the bottom. I've already taken all of the uh, the rubber feet off and the screws out, but it also comes with a, a mounting plate on the back. Uh, here we can see this is the Uvis Light Mini PC, the model CK10. Comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of NVMe storage. Again, it's got the uh, Intel Core i5 80 or 8279U uh, with 19 volts and 3.42 amps for your power draw. And of course, uh, like I said, I took the screws out and the feet off and whatnot. So. Let's get this thing off, maybe. There it goes. A little percussive maintenance there. Oh, I broke that just now, damn. So on the inside, uh, we have our uh, our wireless card right here. We've got our 512 gig drive right there. This is held on with a rubber band uh, and we can actually see if we look closely here, uh, it, it, it's, that is that is unfortunate. Just just from the the heat of having this on for about the last month or so, uh, that rubber band is starting to wear out. So may want to come up with a different solution to hold that uh, that heat spreader in place. But that's what that is right there. <clears throat> and like I said, we've got 16 gigs of onboard storage from the factory. This is um, Kimtigo, uh, 16 gigs of, of Kimtigo, a DDR4 RAM. I will say though, the uh, nice folks over at Sabret uh, sent me a 32 gig kit to throw in here later uh, once we're done with this review. So I do have uh, I do have that. I will also have that in a link in the description down below if you want to check that out. Uh, we've also got, uh, it looks like a, a, a SIM card tray right there if we wanted that, uh, as well as an additional uh, M.2 
I believe M.2 style dry or uh, slot here. We've got a four pin power plug. We've got a SATA dry or a SATA plug right there. Um, and this is the cable that it comes with. So we've got SATA and power. Your power plug is going to be right there. So SATA in the white. And then we've got, or sorry, our power is there, our SATA is there. Uh, so that is basically all that we're going to see on this side. But what I want to do is actually flip this over because I really want to touch on um, on the, uh, the, the, the solution here, the, the cooling solution. Uh, so in order to get to that, what I'm going to do is take out some of these screws. Right, and then that should lift up. There we go. All right, so let's get this thing out. Come on, work with me. Oh. That's the problem. We'll just take those. We'll just take those wireless uh, antennas off of there. All right, and then we've just got one little, one little guy right there. We need to take off, and that is, that is for the fingerprint reader. That's what that cable goes to. This guy right there. So here is uh, the side that we have already seen. Uh, of course, we've got, like I said, our M dot or our M dot two, our wireless, and uh, our RAM there. If we flip this over, there is our cooling solution. Um, I will say that uh, it's loud. It's it's basically, it's a laptop fan, right? So it's going to be loud. The problem is that it's loud when you open tabs or programs or just about anything, this thing ramps up. And unfortunately there is no way to control the fan speed in the software. I reached out to the to the distributor and they, they clarified or, or whatever that there is no way to control this. So I'm actually considering uh, modifying the case a little bit. Of course, this isn't necessarily part of the review. This is just forward thinking here. So what I'm thinking about doing is uh, this, this tray or this plate comes out, taking out this fingerprint reader here and then getting a 120 millimeter uh, hole saw and just drilling out a hole right there and putting a 120 millimeter fan on the top, uh, just blowing straight down, I think uh, would be a better solution than that. Of course, that's not aesthetically pleasing, but there you go. So this is uh, this is the, the, the entire computer outside the case. Um, so... Uh, let's actually get it all put back together. I'll do that off camera and then we'll take a look at some of its functionality and how well it runs certain things. Okay, it is. it looks like it's booting into Windows. That's a good sign, glad, glad to see that. Of course, I'm still plugging in peripherals here. So I've got a mouse and a keyboard, hopefully. Come on, keyboard, plug in. It's a little, little, little fan noise, but not bad. So stoked about that. So it looks like we have uh, Windows 11 here, of course, English, US, I'm gonna say yes. And then uh, United States, sure, why not? Yep, that's correct. Uh, I do not wanna add a second keyboard, so I'm gonna skip. Okay, so now it wants me to agree to a license agreement, that's fine. Let's name the device. What should we name it? Uh, Mini Me, why not? Right, and we'll click uh, next. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up for personal use, sign-in options, offline account. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip for now because I don't want an online account. Uh, who's gonna be using this device? I am, I am DB Tech, and I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna click next because I don't care about a password on here for right now. Oh no, I don't want any of this, no. Okay, so here we are. We are logged into Windows 11. Cool, so I think the first thing I wanna do is open this up. I wanna to go to this PC. Okay, so we do have uh, 475 gigs of that 512. Of course, we're gonna lose, lose some of that to formatting overhead there, that's fine. <clears throat> what I wanna do though next is click here, I go to properties, and let's just see uh, Windows 11 Pro, outstanding. So it is activated, so it comes with uh, an activated digital license of Windows 11 Pro. Absolutely shocked, honestly, to see that, but ver very, very happy. Again, so we can take a look. We've got an Intel uh, Core i5 8279 CPU uh, it, with a base clock of 2.4 gigs, 16 gigs of RAM, 64-bit uh, operating system. All of this looks great. So we'll close that. <clears throat> and... Let's see, let's, um, ooh, you know what? Let's open Edge. All right, so what I wanna do, I like to go to Ninite. I'm sure there are other services like this out there, but this is what I like to use. I'm gonna grab just kind of the, the generic stuff that I always grab here. I guess while this is doing its thing, we can also go grab uh, hard, oops, wrong keyboard again. Oops, HW info. 
Uh, we're gonna download this just so we've got it. I will say this thing's pretty snappy. Like I am, I am fully impressed uh, with how uh, with how uh, snappy this is. We'll just start. I do want to get uh, as much information as I can here. So uh, coffee lake, 14 nanometer. Of course, this is um, a bit of an older processor, which again is fine. No no issues with that. Uh, so again, this is all all the stuff. Uh, that we were looking at earlier. So let's get our sensors. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> so this is, I will say the room I'm in is fairly warm. Uh, our core temperatures are are pretty high. Um, I am, I'm kind of unhappy to see that. I'm gonna have to take this thing apart and see if I can get those temps to come down a bit. It looks like it's working on it. So this is what the thermal paste looked like when I took this thing apart. So I went ahead and cleaned it up, put some new thermal paste on, and things actually did get a bit better. Uh, so that's good. 76. All right. It is, it is coming down. Uh, of course it is. I, I say it's installing some stuff here in the background. Um, CPU packages, everything is okay. It's, it's settling in. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to see all of this coming down. Our CPU package power, uh, six and a half Watts. Outstanding. Glad to see that. Uh, all of that looks really good. Uh, let's see again. So we're, we're, we're high, high fifties. Uh, kind of here at idle. Again, this is a very small, compact PC here. Uh, and maybe maybe we'll take some time and do do some fun stuff with it. So for the first part of the test that we're going to take a look at here, I ran Time Spy at 1080p and never got above about four frames per second. So obviously this is not really meant for any kind of gaming, but here in a minute, we will get some better results when we take a look at the CPU portion of the test. Uh, and of course it's not great, but it was a little better than I expected. So uh, there's uh, kind of what you're going to get with this PC. Okay, guys, so here we go. Uh, our graphics score was 603. Our CPU score was 3275. Um, and uh, here's our overall time spy score of 687. Over here on the on the uh, speed or the uh, H or hardware info, we can see that uh, we didn't get as high as it uh, looks like 95 degrees. So I don't know that it thermal throttled. Uh, but it definitely, uh, it definitely hit uh, pretty, pretty high temps there, uh, as far as both of those are concerned. And uh, yeah, but it is, it is cooling right back off. Uh, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, it is pretty warm in this room. Uh, it is not, uh, not pleasant in here at the moment. Uh, we can also see that we maxed out at about 42 and a half watts on the CPU there. So now let's take a look at some Rocket League. Of course, we're gonna do this at 1920 by 1080, full screen, everything set to high quality with anti-aliasing off. And we'll notice that while we're playing, we're gonna get about 35 to 40 FPS while we're playing this Rocket League. Okay guys, so let's chat for just a minute before we wrap up this video. I actually used this PC, this little mini PC, as my daily driver, uh, not here in the studio, obviously. It's not gonna be good for video editing and that sort of thing, as we saw from the, the video game playing that we showed it earlier in this video, but just as kind of my daily driver for checking emails, scrolling social media, doing day-to-day -day tasks, you know, paying bills, things like that. And I can say that I didn't notice I was using a mini PC. Uh, it may as well have just been a, a, a regular PC tucked neatly away so that I couldn't see it. I, I never had any issues with it, um, you know, in a, in a cooler room, like my, my living room tends to be, uh, versus out here in the studio. Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't run into any overheating issues, no, no thermal throttling. Um, and, and there, there was some noise from the fan, that little, uh, laptop cooling fan that's in there, but, um, but you're going to get that from a laptop most of the time. Anyway, so uh, from a, for, for, for the for the person who's just looking for something inexpensive to get them online to, you know, to log into Facebook, to go to Reddit, to, to tweet about stuff, to pay bills online, those sorts of things, this is a great, great solution. It's inexpensive, it's upgradable. Uh, it's, it comes with Windows pre-installed and already licensed and ready to go. Of course, it does have Windows 11 Pro on it, which uh, you can kind of take that and do with it what you will. I know some people, you know, still want to run Windows 7 or, or Windows 10 or whatever. This comes with 11. So you're gonna have to deal with that. However, uh, because it is just a regular PC, you can install whatever operating system on it you want to install. And that kind of brings me to my next point. Because this has 
500 gigs of hard drive space in it because I'm going to throw a 32 gig uh, kit of RAM in there from the nice folks over at Sabrent. This is going to be another little mini uh, single board server here over here in my rack. And I want to hear from you guys what, what OS, uh, what kind of project we should put on here. Uh, of course, I will have links to everything in the description down below. Uh, so you can pick up one of these for yourself if you'd like to do that. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you in the next video.